Welcome back everyone, my name is Lee from Lubo's Kitchen. Today, we're making Vietnamese pho. So it's getting a bit cold here now, and I thought a beautiful brothy soup would be good for these winter days. So I thought I'd go with a Vietnamese pho. The pho isn't something you can just knock up in a couple of hours. It's an all day thing, but at the end of it, it is amazing. Now, I don't have any takeaway places out here that sell a really good pho, so I'm gonna make it myself today, and I'm gonna take you along. So I've got these brisket bones from the supermarket. They were pretty expensive. You don't expect to pay much for bones, but I couldn't be bothered going to another store to go and get them, so I'm gonna use these today. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our beef bones in a stock pot. We're gonna cover it with water and get it to the boil. Now we're gonna bring this to a boil and we're gonna let it simmer for about 15 minutes. And then we're gonna pour off the water, rinse the bones, and then get them back in the pot with some fresh water. So now we're gonna start charring off the vegetables. So I've got two onions, I've got a nice knob of ginger, and also I've got two heads worth of garlic. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually char them off under the grill nice and hands off. And we want to get some really dark color onto those. If you don't want to do it on your grill, you can always do it on your barbecue, or you could do it also directly over the flame on your stove. Just be cautious, um, turn your sauce fan on because it will smoke up a little bit. So I've just got my raw iron frying pan here. This goes perfect under the grill. And all we're going to do is we're going to slice this ginger up lengthways. Then I've got two onions. I'm not going to do anything special with these. I'm just going to cut these skins and all. And they are just going to go in there too. And then if you had garlic bulbs, you just slice down the middle and just put that in. I have just some individual cloves here. So I'm just going to put these in like so. And now I'm going to put this under my grill and we're going to get some really good color on these. I'm going to turn them frequently, make sure all the surface has got really good color on them. So now we're going to toast hot the spices and that's going to really improve the flavor of those spices when they go into the broth. So then our broth is going to taste even better. So I've just got a frying pan here on like a medium heat at the moment. And at the moment, I'm just going to add the big ones. So we've got two quills of cinnamon. And then we've got about six star anise here. These are all broken up and everything, so that's why it looks like a lot, but about equal to about six full star anise. I'm also gonna add 12 cloves of cloves. And I'm gonna add about six cloves of cardamom. Now, usually you use black cardamom, but I don't have it available. So I'm just crushed six of the normal Cardamom, and I'm sure that will impart quite a bit of flavor in them. Once they start to generate some nice set and everything, we're going to add the other spices. All the smells in my kitchen are so good at the moment. So you've got the anise coming from here, and then you've got the grilled onions from under the grill as well. You can already smell this wonderful broth just coming together. So now I'm going to add two tablespoons of coriander seeds. And I'm also going to add two tablespoons of fennel seeds. And we're just going to toast these off a little bit more. These little ones will take next to no time, so just be very careful. I'd suggest you put them into a bowl. That'll just stop them from cooking even longer. So these are nice and charred now. This is how it should look. So you want nice and brown bits and everything that garlic is just starting to brown over so now we're going to rinse the beef bones and then we're going to actually start our broth so i've just taken the bones off the stove and you can see all the scum and everything that's come out of the bones and that's what we want to take out of the bones to make them much more clearer and flavorful broth
get any of that excess gunk off and then put them back into the pot. Then we're going to add about five litres of cold water to the pot. Now we're going to add our charred onion, ginger and garlic. In it goes. Then we're going to add our wonderful toasted spices. And then I have a piece of brisket here. So uh, if you watch my previous video of me washing up a brisket, that's just a piece of that. Except I've just trimmed off a bit of the extra fat off this because we don't want to make the actual soup too fatty. So I've just trimmed some of that off, left a little bit on, but I've trimmed most of it off and that's going to go into there as well. To this as well, I'm going to add two tablespoons of sugar. So this is just palm sugar, but you could just use normal sugar if you want to. So now we're going to bring it up to a boil. And once it comes to a boil, we're going to simmer it for six to eight hours. And that's what I mean why it's an all day thing. So you can't cheat on this. The longer you leave it, the better it is going to taste. So while we're waiting for the broth to cook, I'm going to slice up the beef. Now, some supermarkets do have the already very thinly sliced beef in the freezer section, or you might be able to get it from an Asian grocer or something like that. But I have either, so I've decided to slice my own. So I'm going to use this oyster blade steak roast. Now, it does have that convective tissue that goes around through the middle there, but I think if I slice it thin enough, I don't think I have to worry too much about it. All I'm going to do is I'm going to just slice off some of this excess fat. And apart from that little bit of connective tissue, oyster blade is a very tender piece of meat. So now I'm going to try and just slice this as thin as possible. The thinner, the better. Now, if you have a meat slicer, like a deli slicer, you can definitely use that. Just make sure your meat's just frozen enough to go through it. You can see those little paws coming up onto the bench, thinking he's getting something. So if your beef did come out a little bit, bit thick, which is a little bit hard when you're trying to just do it with a knife, just lay it out on your chopping board. Now I'm just going to grab some cling film. And just cover these up. And then either using a meat tenderizer or a rolling pin, we just want to just kind of just flatten them out. So now you can see that's nice and thin now. That is going to cook so fast now. So now I've just covered this up. I'm going to put it in the fridge and I'm going to wait until the broth is ready. For one of the condiments, I'm just going to do some thinly sliced onion. So this is just a normal yellow onion. Then I'm just going to put this into a container and I'm going to cover this with water. And we're just going to let that soak. So give it a few hours and that'll just take all the really harsh taste out of the onion. And it's a beautiful column to go with the fur. So this has been cooking for about four more hours now. And I've just checked on the brisket and the brisket looks cooked. You can see ooh, that is going to fall apart so easily. So I'm going to take that out now. And now we're going to simmer this for a couple more hours. And with the brisket, pop it in the fridge. As it cools down, it'll be a lot easier to actually slice up. So I had the fur cook for about six hours now, and I've just let this cool down slightly. And now we're going to strain it. And then we're going to add our seasoning. And then we're gonna dish it up. So I've just got this reheating. Now, to start with, I'm gonna add a quarter cup of fish sauce. Now, I know it does have a bit of a funky taste and everything to it, but you do not notice it in this. So 
So unfortunately, it's been a couple of days. So when I tasted the broth, it was actually really fatty. Now, I don't mind a little bit of fat, but it was really fatty. And I think it was because it was brisket bones. They're the only ones I can get from my supermarket. So I thought rather than cover up the error and everything, I would show you how I'm gonna actually fix it so that if you get the wrong bones, that you can also rectify this. So little point, make sure you get quality bones from your butcher, not the actual major supermarkets. So what I did is I cooled down the broth and I actually put it in my fridge overnight, just in a small pot, just so it would actually fit in the fridge. And, can, and you can see all the fat here has all solidified now. And now what I'm gonna do is I've got a container here and I'm just gonna scoop this fat off. You could probably cook with it, but it's probably gonna taste like fur, so completely up to you. I'm probably just gonna throw it out. And there we go. Now, unfortunately, it's not the clearest broth, but I already did try this today for lunch and it turns out great. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna to do to finish it off and then we're gonna dish it all up. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna heat this right up. So we're just gonna gently just heat this to almost boiling and then we're gonna fix the seasoning and then we're gonna be able to serve it. And also I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna keep fur in my freezer for future use. So that way we can easily dish this up on a cold day without going through the eight hours of cooking this. So while we're waiting, I've got the brisket that we took out earlier and I'm just gonna slice this into slices. And this will very easily just reheat and become a lot more tender once we put it back in the broth. I'm just gonna prepare the noodles. So for my fat, I'm gonna be using these uh, super low-cal noodles, which are made with conjure. And they have half a net carb for this entire bag. I think it's just one carb for this whole bag. So very low. Um, so you can easily make for keto with these conjac noodles. They do have a little bit of an aftertaste, but they actually go really good with the fur. Otherwise, you can be you can just use some um, just some rice noodles that you've just um, boiled up. So I've got our noodles here. Really important, you actually do uh, rinse these these uh, conjac noodles before you use them. Then we've got some bean shoots now. Keep your bean shoots, if you're like me and you find your bean shoots go uh, off very quickly in the fridge, put them straight in your freezer. They don't clump up or anything, so you can just take a little bit, get out at a time. And that's how I'm going to be managing to do my fur from the freezer as well. Now I'm going to put some of this delicious brisket that's been braised or poached. Then I've got our beef that we've sliced up as well. So as well with my beef, what I've done is I've flattened it out in cling wrap and just put it into its portions. And then I've just rolled that up. So it's nice and easy. So when I'm ready to actually go and take it out the freezer, I just have to take one portion out and I have to worry about it all clumping together or anything like that. Then we've got some of these sliced onions. So yesterday when I tried this, I put a quarter of a cup of, of fish sauce into it. And clearly that wasn't enough. It's not salty enough. You don't actually add any salt to your fur. You use the fish sauce as your seasoning. And as I said, you don't taste the fish sauce or anything like that, but it does add a bit of a funk. So you want to use plenty of it. And you'll take you'll, when you taste it, you'll notice when you've got enough of it in there, it'll almost give the broth almost a little bit of a little bit of a funk to it in a good way, in a good way. And the salt will be almost perfect. Like that, that little bit more of fish sauce just really elevated that. But once this comes up to almost a, a really soft boil, then we can pour that over our meat and serve it up. So now we're going to pour the hot broth over the noodles and meat. 
it's really important to make sure that the broth is hot enough so it'll actually cook the beef. I'm also going to serve this with some sriracha or you could use some chili. As well as some cilantro or coriander, what we call it. And also I've got this little tiny lime. It's my first lime from my lime tree in five years. So I'm going to use that today as well. With the leftover broth, I decided to divide the brisket up into different containers and then pull that broth between those containers. And then I'm going to put those in the freezer so I have easy for when I want it. And then I've also got the bean sprouts in the freezer all ready to go. And then I just need to get some herbs and some noodles as well to serve with it. Pretty easy. So let's give this a go. So firstly, we've got this brisket here. And you can see this brisket is perfectly cooked. It just breaks straight apart and it goes really good in the actual broth. So tender. And then we have our oyster blade beef. Now, even though it has that fat going through the middle, cut them really thin, it has made it so tender. And these konjac noodles go amazing with this. You can't taste them at all. Let's try some of this broth. They're so good. And honestly, I thought I, I thought it stuffed up really badly, but this actually turns out really good. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.